Hey, Greg, uh, can you just give us your immediate reaction to what went down tonight and kind of just what was going through your mind during the finishing sequence there when you landed the illegal knee? Uh, my initial reaction was surprise. I just thought the fight was over and I won. And then he disqualified me. So so what was your perspective of what was going on there? Was it just a heat of the moment thing, kind of an experience? Or do you think it was a, you know, that he was going to be getting up and it was going to be a legal knee? I mean, I haven't seen it, but you can go back and look at it, man. I can, and I can guarantee you that his knee was coming up. He was getting up. I was just inexperienced. It was me mistiming it, man. But I was trying to time it. Like, I just watched Cowboy Cerrone do. Like, I just watched everybody else do, man. And I thought it was the right thing to do at the time. And it was not, you know, uh, I messed up. And what kind of learning lessons do you take away from that? I mean, obviously you're disappointed right now, but what, how do you kind of digest this? You don't, man. It's, it's terrible. I'm not one of the regular guys, you know. I was built to do this. I was made to do this, man. And I let people down today. I let my gym down. I let my, my team down. And, uh, you know, it sucks, man. I didn't want him to go out like that, you know. Like that sucks for Alan Carter, man. No matter how he feels about me, it's, it was it's not, it's not okay, you know. Um, I take full responsibility. It's not something I did on purpose. Anybody that's ever heard me talk, met me, or been around me knows that's not something I would do. And uh, I just wish we could go back and go into the third round, man. And just last thing from me, uh, as you were leaving the cage, a lot of booze, a lot of people chanting things at you. Were you hearing any of that at the time, or were you just kind of, you know, entrapped in that moment of disappointment? It would be real selfish of me to sit around and talk about the booze when I'm, you know, I got all these people that just travel halfway across the world to be here with me, man. All I can think about is, like I said, how, how I let these people down, man. People put their name on the line for me. That may not mean a lot to regular people. It means a lot to me, man. How was your conditioning going into the fight, uh, going into the second round? Uh, did you feel fresh going into the second round? Uh, I felt better and better as I got into it, man. It's hard to breathe. He, uh, he choked me pretty good. So that was the only problem I was having. I'd never been choked like that before, but you saw how it worked out, man. He took me down. I got back up. He hit me a couple times. I can take a shot, man. Like I said, I was built to do this, bro. This is what I do, man. Uh, just sucks I didn't get a chance to continue to do it. Uh, and it sucks that it, it happened the way it happened. Like I said, man, it, it, I, I apologize to Alan Crowder, bro. Like, that's a terrible thing to do, a terrible way to go out. So, yeah. You were able to connect um, both in the first and in the second round. Uh, was it a change of your mentality to know that? he was able to take a few of your shots because you were landing pretty flush, it seemed like? Uh, I went to this fight, man, trying to just follow my coach's game plan, man. I was trying to just touch him. I wasn't trying to throw crazy haymakers. You know, I did get a, a little out of control. That's natural for somebody that hasn't really been around too long. But again, I was just trying to land punches, trying to fight the good fight, man. I was enjoying, <laughs> I was enjoying myself and <sighs> It wasn't, you know, he started yelling at me, trying to coax me into being a crazy fighter. I brushed it off. You know, just, I went back to hitting him and doing my job, man. Like, like I said, I felt like I was in the zone, man. And I felt like when I threw the knee, it was a great knee until, like I said, he, he tackled me and disqualified me, you know. Greg, you kind of touched on it a little bit there, but I mean, I wonder, are there positives that you do take out of this? I mean, this was, a UFC debut where a lot of people get nerves, you know, you fought longer than a minute, you showed, you know, some, I mean, so do you, do you take any positives out of this right now or, or are you just focused on, on the negative only? Uh, I recognize that there are positives. I just don't, you know, I don't operate well enough to uh, sit here and acknowledge them right now, man. I, we'll, we'll go back and we'll watch the film and we'll see what I did wrong, we'll see what I did right, but at the end of the day, man, right now I'm just, I'm disappointed in myself, you know, just, not having, the, not having the cool th to, you know, go that deep into the waters and be able to see everything like I, I wanted to and recognize that, you know, I needed one more second before I, I threw that knee, you know, and 
that's just, that's just where my mind goes, man. Like I said, it's to my, it's to my coaches, it's to Dana White, who, you know, everybody that put their name on the line with mine. And, you know, I know it sucks for them. And all I do is talk about, you know, what kind of human being I am, man. And, I, and that's what kind of human being I am, bro. It's, my heart bleeds for them, man, because I, I did this to them. Well, I was going to ask you, talk about the type of human being. I mean, I, I see some people say, of course Greg Hardy cheated. We, we knew this is the type of guy he is. How do you address those people that, that doubt you and say, of course you cheated. Show me one time I've ever cheated in my life. Show me one of their favorite O-linemen or one of their favorite quarterbacks in, in history that I've ever cheated against. Go ask Tom Brady if I ever cheated when I sacked him. I'm not a cheater. That's not on my record. That's not on my resume. 30 years of life, not one time. Not one time have you ever stood up here and asked me a question and I lied to you. Not one time have you ever seen me stand up here and you asked me a question and I told you it wasn't my fault. I was there, I did it, it's my responsibility. I'm a grown man. That's my character. What do you want to do now, Greg? I mean, this was a big moment. I know you're disappointed. I know it's going to take you a while to get over, but I mean, are you anxious to get another fight to, to go, you know, right this wrong? Or do you feel like some time to train and continue to developing makes more sense? What do you, what do you think makes sense for, the, for Greg Hardy? I'm, I'm a part of the machine, man. My attitude doesn't change with wins or losses. It's part of being a boss, man. Meek Mills, shout out. Uh, <clears throat> I'm the prince of war. You know, this is what this is what I do. When the man says, "Let's roll," I'm rolling. I want to get back up as soon as possible. In seven days, I'll be back in the gym. That's how I got to eye. Mandatory take seven days off, and then I'm going back in the gym to fix these problems. I'm gonna fix my timing. I'm gonna fix everything that I need to fix, and I'm gonna be back with bad intentions for whoever wants to step in there with me, man. Alan Crowder, please come back and let's do it again if he wants to. If not, I understand, just like I understand everybody else has their opinion about me. I am not like you. I am not like anybody else. I understand. God bless them. It's okay, man. But I'm here. I'm here to stay. And as long as Dana White will have me, as long as ESPN will have me, as long as you guys will have me, I love all of you, and I'm here to stay, man. And I am going to fix what I did wrong, and it was not intentional.